Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo for rubyguides.com and in this video you are going to learn about dates and date ranges in Ruby and exactly how is that useful for you. Before get, we get started, just a quick reminder that if you like Ruby and you want to learn more about Ruby and become a professional Ruby developer, visit my website rubyguides.com and get a copy of my Ruby book. Now for the topic of this video, we're going to be talking about dates. So for the date, we need the date class and it's not included by default unless we require it. So we, you need to do this, require not data, but date. And now we get access to the date class, right? So this is not a gem, this part of Ruby's standard library, which means that the only thing you need to do is to require it, and then you have access to it. Now, if we want to get the today's date, you can do date today and that's a method, the today method, and we get today's date. A date range, how can we do that? Well, a date range is made with the same syntax as a regular range. So a character range or an integer number range all of the ranges use the same syntax. We need a starting date. So let's make that today. Uh, I'm going to have some parentheses so we can call methods on this range, okay? And now uh, two dots. So that's what actually makes this a range. And then the ending, the end of the range. So this is the start of the range. This is the end of the range. So the ending always has to go to be uh, forward. So there is no reverse, there is no backward range. It has to be forward. So forward, that means a few days in the future. So plus five means plus five days. If you are using rails, you can say this, but it's not necessary because by default, when you're using dates, the, this number means days. Why? Date only works with days, months, and years. Okay? Now we have this range and we can iterate, we can loop over the range. How? Well, just like any other range. We can do map. And then we can have our date there. We have our date. And we can just collect the different dates. And we get an array, right? Of all of the days inside this range. So we're starting starting with today's date, then tomorrow's date, and it goes on after the 12th which is five days after today, today's date, right? So that's how you do a um, range, a loop over the range. Now there's a few things we can do with this. For example, we can get the actual day. So that's the day of the month, right? And we can also get the weekday. So like Sunday, uh, Monday, the, the days of the week. So for that we do weekday, that's the method. But what we get is this array of numbers. We don't know what this means. We have to translate this into the actual English names for the days of the week. How can you do that? Well, pay attention to this little trick that I'm going to show you. A lot of people don't know that this date um, class has some constants and you can get a list of 
constants like this, right? And these are the constants. We can see some interesting ones, like these are different kinds of calendars. Then we have infinity, month names, oh, and day names. That's what we're looking for. We want the day names. What does this look like? Well, we can access this constant like this. And there it is. This is an array of the English English names of the days of the week. Now we can use this and transform, convert, because that's what map does, or weekdays which have this number. Well, it's very convenient because these numbers happen to be an index into this day names array. So what that means is we can do this. And tada, we got our date range converted into the actual day names, right? So we can see that today is Tuesday, and the last day of this range is going to be Sunday. So that's another really cool thing that you can do with ranges, specifically date ranges. So let's see another example where date ranges can be helpful, and that's inside Rails. If you are inside a Rails application, give this a try. Let's say, let's say that we have something like a book um, model, then you can do book where created at, and then we pass in a range, okay? And the range is going to be just like one of these, right? And you can do five days, something like that. No, I'm not inside a Rails app right now, but that works, right? If I exit this and I open the Rails console for this Rails app, you can see that this generates a query that checks between the two dates, between question mark and question mark, which means these are placeholders for these two dates. Right, which is exactly the date range we are working with. So, this saying find books where the create a date is between today and five days in the future. And of course, you can change this if you want to look at create a dates at dates that come before so you can say um six um weeks minus six weeks and that we look for books or whatever you're working with if you're working with fruit or whatever potatoes uh i don't know <laughs> images, users, whatever you're working with, you can use this range to look for things that were created in the last six weeks. In this case, I don't have any here, any records, because I created these records and this example app um, before this date, right? So that's the starting date right here. And I believe you can even do this. I think this is going to be a lot cleaner, six weeks ago. There you are, that's the same, the same starting date, but this a lot cleaner than this. Created that six between, so this reads between six weeks ago and date today, okay? So I think that's super helpful. And a lot of people don't know they can do this and then hard code the between um, query. So 
it's great that you're watching this video because now you learn about this. That's it. That's it for this video. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like it. And visit my website. Visit my website, rubyguys.com to learn more about Ruby and to keep improving your Ruby skills. Thanks all for watching. I will see you in the next video.